man says that it's impossible, when your mind says that it's impossible, when all the circumstances around you saying it's impossible, God is saying yes. Uh, God is saying it is possible with me. It might be impossible with man, but I want you to know it's not impossible with God. would testify to bring glory to their King. How I love to hear the stories, how the Lord brought victory. But how happy I'll be when eternally I'll hear the untold stories. Untold stories of His grace that He poured out on the saints. Untold stories of His love.
encouraging when you see how hard people can get. It's encouraging to see how God can turn it around. Yes. And last night I was just listening to the story of Clarence Thomas, or one of our Supreme Court justices. And uh, what a story. I mean, he, he came from nothing and uh, was raised by his grandfather at one point and then just went into all-out rebellion against everything his grandfather taught him and got into a Marxist group and, and was full of hate. He said, I hated everything. He said, I was so angry at everybody. And, and you see that in the world today. Yes. I mean, these people, you know, when we saw them tear up our nation's capital and running and tearing things up and spray painting things, it's just an unleashed anger and hatred. That's right. And so Clarence Thomas told it, he said, I was so full of anger and hate. And it just came to a top. He said, just where he was involved with these marches and demonstrations and black power. He was talking about all this. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, what am I doing? What am I doing? And he ends up going to the chapel. And he prays to God. And he says, God, and he, he goes, if you'll help me. He goes, I'll never hate again. Hallelujah. And look how God turned his life around. And he if it wasn't for men like him, we'd have done lost our Constitution a long time ago. Our freedoms, the worship, all these things, we'd have lost a long time ago. But God raises up men. Yes. And what a life that looks, you know, I mean, you know the hatred of some of these people. Communism is not just a system. Socialism isn't just a system. It's a system without God. Yeah, right. There's the big point. It's a system without God. That's right. And these people don't have the Lord. And there Clarence Thomas turned. It's kind of like the prodigal son. He <laughs> saw the things being fed to the pigs. And he was hungry. He wanted to eat with the pigs. Mm -hmm. There comes a time, I think people are coming to their senses mm -hmm. of where we were at. It's insanity. And we need the Lord to touch again. Amen. Chapter 13 in your Bibles. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 13. And I'm going to start reading at verse 46 of 13. It says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the Word of God... I want to read that again. They said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many were ordained to eternal life, believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. God, for this day you have given us, we, we look to you today. We ask for your mercies. We ask for your Holy Spirit and that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit will touch our hearts and our lives, Lord, and that we will live our lives, Lord, according to your word today. God, we're thankful for the word. God, there's nothing like your word. God, it brings life. It brings salvation. It brings deliverance. Hallelujah. It brings healing to our bodies. We know, God, that what your word, God, will go forth like a hammer. And, God, it will do the work, God. God, because it will not return void, but it will accomplish that it is set to do. God, I pray that it will do the work today, God. And you will touch our lives. You will touch me, Lord, your servant. God, Lord, let the anointing and the power of your spirit 
rest upon me today, Lord. And God, I pray that soul, a soul will be changed, God, from the hearing of the word today. Lord, draw us, Lord, quicken us, God. By your word, I pray, Lord, and use us, Lord, because we know we're just broken vessels, God. And God, Lord, you have mended and Lord, you have done a work in us that we can be used for your glory, Jesus. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You know, this is such a powerful uh, period of time. Uh, you know, the book of Acts, the day of Pentecost, there was a mighty sign, there was wonderful signs and wonders, there was salvations taking place. The uh, power of God was coming down greatly upon the church and lives were coming to Jesus Christ because there was faithful men that continued to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. They were called by the power of God and God used them as it says in the scripture, Paul and Barnabas, they wax bold. I'm thankful that the power of God, the glory of God, God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost that comes down upon us today. I'm thankful that he has touched my life and the only reason that I stand behind this pulpit preaching the word of God to you is because of the power of the Holy Ghost. I was just sharing with someone the other day. Someone was talking about getting loud. They they are loud. They were screaming. They were, you know, they they were kind of being negative about it. And I thought to myself, you know, the person that they were saying, I'm kind of like, really? And I, I had to kind of explain to them, I said, because I really wasn't the type to get up and to get loud. But when God, when I stood behind this pulpit on February 1st, 2015, and I want you to know I was shaking in my shoes. I was nervous. I just had a couple verses on, on my notepad. I, I really didn't have much. I had a scripture, but I was leaning on the Lord. And I want you to know, and you that were here that morning, morning. Raise your hand if you were here. Uh, you remember it very well. Um, I remember it very well because the anointing came upon me and I was loud. Shannon said, uh, you know, I lit, I raised the roof off or I forget the rafters came off, he said. Uh, and, but you knew that it wasn't me, it was the Holy Ghost. It was the anointing, and I, I can recall from that very moment because I never really, I always said Shannon was the preacher. I was just the singer, and I shared my testimony. But when I stood behind this pulpit, I want you to know, it was just like God himself came down into my mind and into my mouth, and everything flowed. Oh, it's a wonderful thing, as Brother Shambach says. You know when you have it, and you know when you don't. And it's a wonderful thing. It was the anointing that breaks every yoke. And thank God even that day when I preached the word of God. Hallelujah. Tanya came to this altar and gave her heart to Jesus Christ. And God delivered her and saved her soul. And that was just the beginning of good things. Hallelujah. Holy boldness. A courage. Are we going to need that in the day that we're living in? I want you to know, I truly believe even in times where you read in the scriptures, you really could not bear witness and really could never even come close because we really haven't faced uh, the persecution that others have faced as we have been blessed in this nation. But I truly believe, I don't know what the future holds when it comes to the church of Jesus. Christ. But I truly believe that there is a remnant. There are those that are going to be bold and they're going to stand firm on their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want you to know I want to be one of those people. Amen. And even as Brother Doug prayed in his prayer, he wanted to be, I want to endure to the very end. 
no matter what comes my way, you know, because I, I, I just told Shannon the other night, I had a dream, it was early morning, and I woke up from that dream. And I don't really know what it was or, you know, if it's something of the future. I just know that if it, if it happens, I want it to happen the way it was in my dream. Because I can recall being tortured in my dream. I can recall them torturing, burning, and, or this kind of electricity shock going through my body. And then it was burning my flesh. And I felt the pain in my dream. And I know that it was because of my faith that I was being tortured. And I can recall in my dream, I began to sing, Jesus, Jesus, in my mind, not out loud. I was just singing it in my mind, Jesus. There's just something about that name. And all of a sudden, as I was singing it in my mind, the, all the pain left my body. And I woke up from that dream. And it stirred me to pray and to say, Lord, whatever the cost, whatever it may bring me, Lord, let me hold on to the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hold on to the bloodstained banner of Jesus, the cross that he bore for my sin. He paid the punishment so that I didn't have to. Lord, whatever the cost, let me hold on to your name. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Let me hold on to your word. I don't know if it's true or someone sent it to me that those over in Afghanistan, they had, they had reported that there was those that were martyred, the church that were martyred. They said that they, I don't know if they had communications, but they heard those and they said that their faith was strong and they even said that their children were making the declaration that they weren't going to deny Jesus. And then they said that they heard gunshots and they heard screaming. I want you to know we're living in a day where we need to hold on to God's holy word and we need to believe it with everything that's within us because I don't want to wander away from his word. I don't want to wander away. I want to be like David as he cried out in Psalms 119. He says, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. He said, for thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We're living in a day where we better get a hold of God's word. We better meditate on it. We better read it. We better believe upon it and know that it's the only thing that's going to see us through this whole dark world. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm really moved today, and I'm, I'm thankful today. You know, really, uh, they showed a list. I think it was Pastor Stevie Light that shared a list of the top five number one books that have been sold throughout the world, I think it was, and the Bible was at the top. Five billion that were sold. You know, there are hungry souls today. There are lives that have been changed by the Word of God. They opened the Word of God. They believed or what it said and they received it and it turned their life upside down. I want that to happen here at Lake Gordon Assembly of God. Amen. I want that to happen. Who's Lake Gordon? You. You are the church of Jesus Christ. God is calling you to His Word to be bold and to preach the Word of God in season and out no matter what it costs. Lord, let me preach it. Hallelujah. Let warning. Let me give out the heat. Let me give out the encouraging word to someone that needs it today. That's truly why I know that God has placed me here. Because He cares for people. He loves you. He doesn't want to see you lost. He doesn't want to see you without His Word, but He wants you to grab forth and receive it with everything that's within you. Right. We're living in a day today, you know, where we've turned away. Come, We've turned away. That's right. We've turned away from God's Word. 
Yeah. And I know sin has always, a, you know, been, a, you know, sin's here, you know. There is, but God's grace is greater. And but we can see that the foundation, the foundation, that's why your foundation has to be sure. It has to be steadfast. It can't just be something that just comes out of your mouth. But you've got to live it out. You've got to live it out. And I want you to know there's just some days where that's not always easy, is it? That's right. It's not always easy. You know, I, I say, you know, today, you know, I'm thinking, Lord, I need your grace. I can't do this without you. I can't make it through another day. I can't preach your word. I can't do this without your help. When we realize that we come to a place where it's not our way, but it's God's way. I was reading in the scriptures and reading in Samuel there and you know the 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 people of Israel they wanted a king they wanted you know and, and even Samuel he was the priest he was the leader the spiritual leader and and he, he he tried to make them see that this was really something that they didn't need and, and really you know it, it says in there that and he was moved by it you know a lot of times we can take offense or think that it's us but I want you, you didn't come to church because of me. I hope that you came because you love the Lord and you want to serve Him and you want to live for Him. You're not here for just, you know, you, you're the person beside you to say, hey, I made it here today. Give me the check off. No, I'm here because I need God in my life. That's right. That's right. That's right. But today... You know, we, we see that we, we go away, we stray away from the things. And this is the way it was for Saul. And, and it says that God raised him up to be the king. But he told Samuel, he said, I want you to know it's not that they've rejected you, they've rejected me. And really that's where it's at today, folks. It's not about the preacher it's about where our relationship is with the Lord. Right. Where, where is your relationship with the Lord? Are you thriving? Are you living your life as bold and as faithful? Lord, we need to examine ourselves and say, where are we at spiritually? And we have to think, uh, have we gone forward or have we gone backwards? Are we going stronger or are we going weaker? God is looking for a lifestyle. Yeah. And it's going to take that in our lives, I truly believe, that will keep us. And we all know the story with Saul. Yes, he became king. And God placed him. But he found himself turning away from the commandments of the Lord. He found himself doing it his way and instead of doing it God's way. He went ahead and he was looking at the people. He was looking in man's eyes instead of looking at what was, what was pleasing into the eyes of the Lord. He made the sacrifice. He made the, the burnt offerings and stuff. He didn't wait on Samuel. And Samuel came and he would already placed the, the burnt offerings and did it his way. And he wasn't supposed to. And Samuel, you can read it there in the scriptures, how powerful when Samuel comes to him and says, and Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which He commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Now, right there at the end. He would have established His kingdom forever. See, when we follow the Lord and His blessings, when we lean not into our own understanding and the way that we want to do things, but when we lean on the Lord and His Word and we turn not away from Him, God will send down His blessings upon us. That's right. Amen. You know, and I, I look at the world or our, our nation 
And, and I don't know, and I've said before, I don't know what lies ahead. I don't know, you know, but right now, it surely don't look good. It surely doesn't look good. You know, we just, um, someone sent it uh, to us in a text message that um, Harvard, the university there, their new lead chaplain, they have multiple chaplains, but the new lead chaplain is atheist. He's the lead. He's over all the other chaplains. His philosophy is, I think we all just need to lean on each other. <laughs> you know where that's going to get us? In big trouble. Because as Shannon said it, when you take God out, when you don't have what you need to make it through, I want you to know, these are, uh, as Bill said, our schools, our, our children, those that are learning, and, and as the scripture says, they're ever learning, but never knowing the truth. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. They're never knowing the truth. A day where we've turned away from what is right. And we can see that the end of Saul's life. It says that God was silent with him. He tried to get a hold of God. But he could not. See there's one thing we've got to realize. And when we know the way. And when we, what we should walk in. God is looking for us to turn to him. And Saul knew the way that he should be walking in. God is looking for that in the church today. And He's looking for that in our lives every day. Lord, don't let me stray from Your Word. And I think today, how, how does a person cleanse their way? How does someone turn away from the things that are going on? As David cried out, he said, by heeding thereto to the according to the word of God. The only way that you're going to make it through and that you're going to have the victory today is when you trust in the word of God and you turn to his word because his word is life. His word is everything to you. I'm thankful today for men and women that have been faithful in preaching the word of God. I don't know where my life would be today for those people that preach sermon after sermon. I heard the word of God. I was raised on these pews and then even down through my life, all the evangelists, the teachers, the preachers, and the pastor. Hallelujah. Thank God for someone that will give you the truth. Amen. I want to give you the truth. And this was the story here, you know, as they were, Paul and Barnabas were preaching the word. There were those, the Jews that came up and they, they didn't receive it. These were God's chosen people. These were the ones that should have received the word of God. And Paul and Barnabas did not stop. You know, a lot of times we get discouraged and we think no one's listening, no one's hearing, but we got to keep on pressing forward. We got to keep on telling the good news. And they went to the Gentiles. Aren't you thankful? This isn't just for a certain group of people, but it's for all that will come. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. We can call on the name of the Lord. And they continue to preach the word of God. And it says here in the scriptures that the Gentiles, it said, look at verse 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. You got to believe. You got to give your whole heart and put your trust in God's word. 
I was so moved, and those have, have many, how many have heard of um, Dave Reaver and his ministry? If you have it, I want you to go home and look him up. He's got a wonderful testimony. You know, he was a Vietnam vet and left for dead. One of those grenades, you know, he had in his hand, and it blew up, and it, it just mangled his whole body. And he was uh, just, uh, he's a total miracle. And, you know, God just, all the things that he went through, but God has used him. And I, what moved me is when I think of those, you know, that he was out there fighting at one time for. Now he went uh, along, um, Jimmy Swagger, you know, got alongside him. And they are making Bibles for people over in Vietnam. Those Bibles, you know, what are they called? The, um, it's not coming. Yeah, the... Yeah, the expositor Bible, you know, where it, you, you have a verse. If you don't have one, they're really good to have. Uh, it'll kind of explain each verse to you. So they were making one of these Bibles for, uh, you know, making these Bibles for the people over at Vietnam. And, and I can just imagine seeing those people receiving that Bible. They were talking about that one pastor, and he had a hard time understanding Revelation. Revelation is deep. And he was so moved and so touched by that Bible that he could be able to study and feast on the Word of God and then he would be able to share it to more people that they would receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God for those that have received the Word of God. Look in verse 46, it says, And it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. I like that. It says it was necessary. Now a lot of people say, you know, necessary, but I had to look up the meaning of necessary. It says, required to be done, achieved, or present needed essential. You know, we can think of all the things that's necessary in our lives. We can think of our job. We can think of our house. All the things, the bills have got to be paid. We got to put dinner on the table. We got to set our time and our appointments and our vacation. We got to do all these things. We got to make sure all these things that are necessary. But here, I want you to focus on what's the most important and necessary thing in our lives. It's God's word to be spoken to you. Amen. It's God's word to be spoken into a life, to transform them, to change them, to save them from their sins and bondage. I know we're living in a world where there seems to be a lot of brokenness, but I want you to know Jesus, hallelujah, He can take your brokenness and He can mend it and He can put it back together. And it starts with His word, hallelujah. No matter what your need is today, we need God's Word. D.L. Moody, I like what he said. He said, the Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. So important that this is the most important thing that you need to have in your life. Spend time in God's Word. Hold fast as Paul declared it in Philippians. He said, holding forth the Word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may run, hallelujah, may not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He realized that the things that he did for Jesus Christ, it meant everything. There's a lot of things that we do in vain. But there's one thing you've done today that's not in vain. You have found yourself in the house of God and you have heard the word of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That will set you free. I want to be like, like uh, Paul and Barnabas that were faithful and they took that holy boldness. Hallelujah. Let that be your prayer this morning. You know, I, I think to myself and I say, Lord, I could never even try to come close. 
But I want you to know, God can use you. But we're living in the day, I like what um, Leonard Ravenhill said. He said, the apostles had no gold, but they had lots of glory. We have lots of gold, but no glory. There is a time, there's a day where we need to come back. You know, I think of it today. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the vehicles. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have none of these things that we have today that we can preach the word. But it says that the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Hallelujah. It went forth because of those that were determined and they had the holy boldness to preach the word of God and souls were saved and there was a mighty awakening. Hallelujah. Lives were changed by the power of God and by the word of the Lord. Let this word be published throughout the world. Let this word go forth from your life that another soul will be saved and transformed by the power of God. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand.
คู